Hey guys, in this episode we are heading down under to find all kinds of cool animals. Get ready for this. So these are Australian fruit bats, guys. And uh, as you can see, they're pretty big. <laughs> they hang out in big groups of up to 7,000 bats. And as their name suggests, they eat fruit. But uh, the other thing about them is not only can you see them because they're big, you can also smell them. Ugh. So another really cool thing about these guys is even though they're bats, they don't use echolocation. They have a really strong sense of smell and really great eyesight to find their food. If you ever run across these guys, you gotta be careful because they actually carry a number of deadly viruses, including Hendra and Lyssa viruses, which is basically like an Australian rabies. And they can give it to you the same way any other rabid animal can. Whoa, look at them taking off, guys. They are all going right now. You can hear their warning call right there. So sometimes cars plow down this road, and these are two of Australia's most common animals. We have the kangaroo and we have the wombat. They're always crossing the road and it's a dangerous situation for both the animal and for the person in the car because if you hit a big kangaroo it's a lot like hitting a person and every year people actually die from hitting a kangaroo and there's there's tra there's, there's car damage there's vehicle damage so you have to have vehicles which are suited for these conditions. So a lot of the guys which actually live out here in the outback will have like four wheel drives and will have any kind of preventative armor on the car to make sure that if they are going to hit an animal, that they're well safe from being injured and that the animal is obviously going to, you know, fling off to the side of the road. So um, these are just like a standard bull bar that you can put on your car, on your vehicle. Uh, and this will help in protecting not just your vehicle, like your radiator, uh, from being pierced but also from the animal coming up and hitting that screen um, every year there are fatalities in Australia from uh, people not just swerving wildlife but hitting wildlife as well so when you're out here in the sticks you've got to be prepared should they also slow down a little bit maybe well, it's hard to slow down when you're on these roads 110, but yeah, I guess that's probably one of the, one of the things that you can do. But, oh, and also, um, <laughs> that's, that's a very good point. Um, so, in Australia, a lot of the animals here, um, which you have to be mindful of, are the ones which are crepuscular. You're probably thinking, well, what's crepuscular? Crepuscular are animals which are active during dawn and dusk. So, you probably saw um, this morning, as we are getting up really early, the kangaroos were crossing kangaroos the road. Kangaroos were all crossing the road, yes, they were, they were all over the place. That's right, so be very mindful in dim light that there are going to be animals crossing the road, and even at night time, make sure that you've got your high beams on, you need your high beams on. Uh, that way you can just have a bit of visual acuity on both sides of the road, and to know exactly what's in front of you. These guys here, they're pretty common to find crossing roads. It's an eastern long neck turtle. And what they'll do is, let me just turn this car on. What they'll do is as it's been raining like this, they find it as an opportunity to go from point A to point B. And you just see down there, the catchment down there, that's obviously where he's heading off to. So he's probably came from, oh, there's a rabbit. There you go. Who won the race between the tortoise and the hare? <laughs> obviously, obviously that guy did. <laughs> right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, what we'll do is, yeah, often uh, a common impact that will happen with these guys is when there's a little bit of rain, these guys will start crossing from point A to point B and quite often uh, they get hit by cars, unfortunately. So I think what would be best is we'll just pick him up, we'll take him down and uh, give him an early entry into the water. Awesome, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> so that's the tail. <laughs> If I put him in the, 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 way, the, the, wrong, the wrong way, he'll go right back up the hill. <laughs> I don't know which way he's going. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Alright, we're gonna let this guy back into the water so he's safe from car traffic and he can go back. There we go, he'll take off at his own time. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll actually sit there for around about 10 15 minutes. Make sure the predator is Make sure that's right, yep, before he'll he'll finally end up taking off. But you can see here he's got such a beautiful catchment all the way along. Plenty of food, plenty of other buddies, and out of the way from traffic. So this is a wombat, guys. They're super great diggers. They're really super powerful, short, stocky build. It's great for tunneling into the ground. And there are two species of wombats in Australia. This guy right here is a common wombat. And uh, one of the cool things about wombats is that uh, even though they're short and stocky and they look like, man, look at those little legs. They can get up to almost 25 miles an hour. They're marsupials, they're just like kangaroo, where they keep their young in their pouch. And one of the cool things about their pouch is actually unlike kangaroos where it kind of opens up front ways, theirs opens up in the back. So when they're digging around like this, they don't get any dirt on the little babies. And these guys have a really hard plate on their backside right there. So what they do is when they go in their hole and there's a predator, they'll actually lower their back. The predator will go over the top of their back and then they'll push it up and crush them in their hole. Whoo, you don't want to be in that situation, guys. So I'm hiking up this uh, really tall hill, guys. Uh, see if I can uh, spot some wild goats up on the top. And... Uh, Getting kind of tired because it's been actually a long way up. Um, and I'm still not there yet. <laughs> All right, what animal are we going to find next? What am I digging for? Well, this right here, guys, is a southern rock lobster. They're common here in Australia, and uh, they are really hard to get out. They'll get underneath the rocks, and they'll just kind of latch on. They have all these little bumps right along their shell, where basically they'll just be hard as hell to pull out. And uh, they're called the cockroaches of the ocean, because there are so many of them, and uh, unlike cockroaches, there are a lot of people that like to eat these guys. And then I went ahead and put him back under the rock where I found him so he could go back about his business. Alright guys, go ahead and click that follow button for new wild videos every single week and new wild live streams where you guys get to get up close and personal with some of the coolest animals on the planet.